In the last videos, we've learned how chord inversions work, how to figure out an inversion for any kind of chord. And then we've started practicing major and minor chord inversions by jumping through the different positions. That's the most useful and really important thing to do first to start getting comfortable with them. But here I'm gonna teach you a specific method that I always use with my students to help you find or recognize these positions straight away on any major or minor chord without having to jump through them first. The best thing to do is just to focus on chords with white notes in first. To be able to find chord inversions instantly as easily as you can find a standard root position shape, which is important to help us play more fluently and learn new things much quicker. The crucial thing to do is to reference the root of the chord and then create the new shape from there. Think about what you do when you're asked to find a root position chord. If someone said play a G major, what do you instinctively do? You look for the note G and then you make the shape from there. So let's describe this root position shape as the bottom up shape. The root is on the bottom. So we find that and then we build the shape above. And for major and minor chords, we can picture that as two thirds on top of each other. A third from the root to the middle note and then a third from the middle note to the top note. And for these white note chords, that appears as every other white key. So let's look at what that looks like with a first inversion shape. We'll do C major. So C major root position is like this. And the first inversion shape, if we take the bottom note off the bottom and put it on the top, that gives us this. So here we can see we took the root off the bottom and we put it on the top. So importantly here, the root is on the top and the rest of the shape appears underneath. So instead of going bottom up like we did on root position, we're now gonna find this chord by going top down. I like to call this the top down shape with my students for a time because it reminds them how to find it. So to find this straight away if someone said I want you to play a C major first inversion or if you just wanted to play some kind of C and you were choosing yourself how to voice the chord and you wanted to choose this. The first step is exactly the same. Find the root and then build this shape underneath. Top down. Now just then I played that and then I played the others. Of course, you've got to do the top down thing visually, but then end up actually playing the whole thing in one block. Don't actually move your fingers one at a time like that. So in order to get that, we have to really remember what the shape we make underneath is as well. So with a root position shape, like we was practicing in the previous video, check that out if you haven't watched it yet. The root position shape is a nice even spread of notes. And the first inversion shape is a slightly uneven shape. We've got the bigger gap of a fourth here and the smaller gap of a third there. So if you remember that the root's on top and you need to come top down and you can remember what the shape is, you can find that shape starting on any of these chords. I'm gonna do a series of guided practice videos on inversions very soon to test you finding these. But for now, let me just show you a handy method. So to start off finding that shape, I think a good thing to do is, is to try and play any chord inversion that's only white notes. So that means just creating a top down shape but not worrying about what the chord is, just picking a random note to start from. Stick your top finger on any note and then, so I've got a D here and then think about how that shape feels underneath. So each time you're just looking to get this fourth and then a third. Do another one, just put your finger on any other random note. So I've landed on G and I've created the same shape of a fourth and then a third. So each time you wanna use those fingers five, two and one when we're doing this in our right hand to start with. And remember this puts your fingers in a similar shape that the chord makes as well. And if you can just remember that shape, remember it's only slightly different from a root position shape, this, one, this gap here is just a bit bigger. Then the only thing you need to do next is when someone says find a specific chord, instead of putting this top note on a random note, you just find a note like you would. So if I said E minor, I find E and create that shape. If someone's wanted me to play an A minor, then I just put my finger on A and create that shape. Obviously at the moment, we know we're sticking with chords with just white keys, but when you don't have that context, you also have to rely on your knowledge of which chords only have white notes in, so um, not to get confused A minor with A major, which has a black key in. Different skills need to work together sometimes. And let's repeat exactly the same idea, the same method for second inversion shapes. So if we run through C again to find the second inversion shape to start with, there was root, there was first, there was second. Okay, so now 
the root is in the middle. So remember, we want to keep track of the root. That's the most important thing to do. So we can find any second inversion shape now by locating the root, just like we did for the last two, in this case, C. And then we build the shape around. So I like to call this one the middle around shape middle and then around, build the shape around it. And just as a reminder, this shape is back to front to the first inversion shape. We now have this larger gap of a fourth on the bottom and the smaller gap of a third on the top. And to start with, we're gonna use fingers one, three, five to practice this chord. Practice that exactly the same way. Find any random note to start from as your middle note and build the shape around. Remember, don't actually play that note and then add the other ones. You kind of want to eye them up on your way down and actually play the chord all together. Pick another random note, doesn't matter which one, and then find that same shape around. So your focus is getting this fourth here and that third there without accidentally doing the opposite shape and doing the fourth there and the third there. That's a different chord. And then once you can do that comfortably, starting from any note, then just like before, if someone wants you to play a specific chord, let's say D minor, you just target D first and build the shape around. So root position, you find the root and build the shape above, bottom up, and you've got to remember what the shape looks like. First inversion is top down, so you locate the root and build this other shape below. And the second inversion was middle around, so you locate the root again and then build the second inversion shape around. Just quickly, if this video has been helpful so far, then please click the like button as that will be really helpful for the channel. And if you have any questions, then please let me know in the comments below. And I also have a PDF worksheet available from my website, which is a clear recap of everything I've covered in these three videos, as well as slash chords. And that includes a complete list with graphics of every single major and minor chord inversion. Major and minor chords are built with a root, a third and a fifth. A major chord has a major third and a minor chord has a minor third. Though for this, we don't need to always make a distinction. If that doesn't mean anything to you, then you need to watch my video linked in the description below on how to build major and minor chords. How we build chords with intervals is kind of fundamental knowledge you have to learn. So the root is just the name of the note we start a chord from. The third is how far this note is from that note. And then the fifth is how far this note is from the starting point of the root. So those are the interval names of the notes in the chord. So in a C major chord, the root would be C, E would be the third, and G would be the fifth. But as you know, in the inversion shapes, we mix the order of these notes up. When we keep track of the root like we've been practicing, that helps us visualize where the other notes are as well. Root is always number one, and these numbers always go in order. They just kind of loop around. So in first inversion, when we put the root up this side, Think of it as looping round. The root's there and then it loops back around to here, third, fifth. And then in second inversion, we have the root, the third, the fifth loops back around and the fifth's down there. So if we're keeping track of that root, then from there we can tell, oh, the third is the one that's this side. And if there's not one that side, that means that you must be in first inversion, so it loops back around third, fifth. So you need to think about this quite visually. And just to avoid any other confusion, if we were in that C major chord, C is always the root, E is always the third, and G is always the fifth, no matter where those notes are. Each note of the chord basically has an interval name which describes how far away from the root it was when it was in root position. And however you jumble up the notes afterwards, each interval name still sticks to each of those notes in the chord. But sometimes we use interval names to describe how the notes are spread out as well. And that's when you need to make sure you know what people are referring to when they're using interval names. It's useful to describe the distance between the notes like we did in the previous section to help us understand the shapes and how those notes are spaced out. So in a root position shape, it was a third from here to here, but then it's also a third from the middle note to the top note. For a first inversion shape, the root is on top, the third is on the bottom, and the fifth is in the middle. But the spacing between these two is a third, and the spacing between these two is a fourth. Imagine three, four, five is a third, because that's three numbers. And five, six, seven, and then we get back to one, which is the root. That's four numbers, so that's a fourth. And then for second inversion, 
that's just the other way around. And it's also particularly crucial to know where that third is. So you can practice changing these chords from major to minor. It's the third that we move, isn't it? To go between a major chord and a minor chord. So just to remind you of that in root position, here's a C major again. We have the root, the major third in this case in a major chord and the fifth. Um, if we flatten the third, that becomes C minor. It's not specifically the middle note that we flatten, it just happens to be the middle note when we've got the notes in this order, but it's the third. So if I've got um, a second inversion shape, that third is on top, but it's still the third we need to move. So if you know where it is, you can flatten the third. And now you've got your C minor chord. And look, it's still middle around, but from that root, you can see that minor third. C to E is two whole steps, a major third, and C to E flat is one and a half whole steps, a minor third. If we did that in first inversion, well, here's C major first inversion again. If the root is on top, you know the next one up would be the third, but we haven't got that, so it loops back around. It's at the bottom, so it's gonna go one, and then loops back around three, and then five. So the third's on the bottom here. It's the third that we move to make it minor, so we flatten the third. And now we've got C minor first inversion. So we can still find that straight away by going top, down, like that. In the last lesson, I also spoke a lot about picturing a stream of the chord. That can also really help you find these positions straight away. So if I'm picturing this stream of C major and I want to play the first inversion shape, I can locate that root, but then I can remind myself of what this shape is by picturing the rest of that stream and just playing this chunk of the stream. And the same with the second ver inversion, I'm gonna picture a wider stream of all the notes of the chord, locate the root that I want to go middle around from, and then I just can see the other notes because they're the other notes in that stream. I'm just kind of leaving out these ones. And with this C minor chord as well, it also really helps to picture the stream. So if I can picture this stream of C minor, that first inversion is this chunk in the stream. If I know the roots on top, I can come down and then play this chunk of the stream, just leave this one out. So I can almost like picture this root position shape here if I like as well and just catch those two and not have that one. And the same with second, picture the stream, just kind of know where the root is, go middle around this note here, but then just not play that note or those two notes. I've just got this little chunk of the stream here. Let me show you that the other way around. So if this is a D minor chord in root position, we already have the minor third. So the minor third goes up to create the major chord. We raise this by a half step. So as long as we know where the third is, we can still do that. Now in those inversion shapes, the third will be in the same place. It's in the middle and root position. In this second inversion shape, look, here's the, the middle around shape. We find the root, middle around. Now, I, because that's the root, I know that must be the third. Root, third, fifth would be there. It's looped back around. So I know I need to raise the third. The third is just on top now. I raise the third. And look, I've got D major second inversion now. And I could get there as well by jumping through the inversions of D like we did in the other videos. So two ways of getting to the same thing. And if I did D minor first inversion again, there's our top down shape. Well, the roots on the top, that would be the third, wouldn't it? Because one, two, three, and then that note has a loop back round. I've got it down here. So it's the third that we raise from a minor third to create a major chord. So we've got the major third, raise that by a half step. Remember with black keys in, we need to slide our hand forward a bit so we can reach everything more comfortably. Now I've got D major first inversion. And then you can start working your way around the other chords. So the pro process is basically exactly the same. It's probably just gonna take a little bit more practice. I think the shapes are a little bit more visually confusing to get used to. When I do the guided practice session on these, I'm gonna cover all these different groups one by one. Obviously this is more of an overview and in terms of real practice, you need to tackle things bit by bit. So make sure to come back for those guided practice sessions because I think they'll really help you get to grips with these and start recognizing them easily. Obviously paired with the practice we talked about in the second video of jumping through the positions. If I just look at one of these quickly, so even though they look different, 
we're still going to be able to do the bottom up, top down and middle around shape. So root positions of D flat major is bottom up. First inversion is top down still. And I know it looks quite different, but this is actually still a fourth and this is still a third. So with these shapes, I think it really starts to pay off when you can picture this chord stream like this. And then you're playing the root position chunk, the first inversion chunk or the second inversion chunk. So it's kind of like the last lesson, I guess, but you're specifically remembering how to find which chunk straight away by um, locating the root first and remembering that's going to be on top for that one or that's going to be in the middle for that one. But I'm still visualizing this whole stream kind of as I do that. And remember, that's also going to help set you up for all the the other various ways that you end up voicing chords as well. I hope that was helpful. Please let me know in the comments if it was. Remember, I've got that PDF worksheet you can download from my website too. And make sure to look out for the guided practice videos I'll be putting up soon to help test you find and recognize these chords and get really quick at doing it. Thanks for watching.